Before we start the video on the, um, the Rock Pocket Mouse that's presented by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, what I want you to do is go ahead and get a piece of paper out. And then I want you to, as we're watching the video, I want you to write down as many key terms as you can. And the goal here is to get at least 30 key terms. Key terms that kind of describe what's going on in the video, what's going on with the Rock Pocket Mouse, and ultimately what's gonna be discussed or how it's all gonna relate back to natural selection. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some instructions of what to do with those, with, those, um, with those keywords and what we're gonna do with those different things, all right? So make sure that you write down as many as possible and good luck. Across the American Southwest, golden deserts dotted by cacti and brush stretch for miles. Yet here in New Mexico's Valley of Fire, the landscape changes dramatically. Patches of black rock interrupt the sand, remnants of volcanic eruptions that occurred about 1,000 years ago. The eruption spewed a river of lava more than 40 miles long across the desert. As the molten rock cooled, it darkened, leaving any creature dependent upon camouflage in serious trouble. In the complex battle of life, one of the constant struggles is between seeing and not being seen, the evolutionary game of hide and seek. And we've come here to the Valley of Fire in New Mexico a battlefield to find one of the tiniest soldiers and what it can teach us about how evolution works. Okay, let's take a break. It's your turn. I want you to think about the type of colors of mouse that there are and which one would be more successful in this region. On the desert sands, the rock pocket mouse blends in perfectly, its light-colored fur concealing it from predators. But on dark lava, the same fur makes the mouse stand out, attracting the many creatures that see it as food. These mice are the Snickers bar of the desert. They're eaten by foxes and, and coyotes and, and rattlesnakes and certainly by owls and maybe even occasionally hawks. And most of those predators are visual predators. You know, we haven't been so what happened to the pocket mice that found themselves on this new terrain? When I accompany biologist Michael Nachman onto the lava, it doesn't take long to find out. Oh, this one's closed. Does it have Nachman something? has been collecting yeah. mice yeah. unharmed in traps. All right, it's time to engage with your partner a little bit. We're going to keep looking at this video, but as we go through it, I want to stop every once in a while and take into consideration what's going on with here with the video and how it relates to natural selection. So let's look at the, the next question and uh, see what you think. And it's a dark one. It is. Yeah. Now, are uh, most of the ones you find up here dark? Almost all as of them. Not yeah. only have the mice here evolved to be as dark as the rock, shake them into the, bag. the color change has occurred precisely where it will conceal them from hunters. 
and a bit of a white underbelly, too. That's right. All of the dark ones uh, here and on other lava flows have a white underbelly, and presumably there's no selection for dark on the belly because yeah. predators are coming from above. Left to themselves, the mice show no preference for light or dark rocks. It's the predators that have made the difference. The change in color over evolutionary time in the population is driven by predators weeding out the mice that don't match their background. But how did the dark mice arise in the first place? When a black mouse appears in a light population of mice, that is usually going to be due to a new mutation. And those are random and rare events. To fully understand the pocket mouse transformation, Nachman moves from the lava to the lab. He and his team extract DNA from light and dark mice taken from one desert region. The aim? To find one or more genetic mutations that cause dark coloration. A mutation is a change in the chemical letters that make up our genes. It's a copying error that may occur when our cells divide. Mutation seems to mean that something bad has happened. Well, mutations are neither good or bad. Whether they are favored or whether they are rejected or whether they're just neutral depends upon the conditions an organism finds itself. So for the pocket mouse, a mutation that caused the mouse to turn black, that is good if you're living on black rock, and it's bad if you're living out in the sandy desert. The light mice are all on the bottom, here, here. Fur color here, is a trait controlled by many genes. To figure out how dark mice evolved, Nachman focuses on how these genes differ in dark and light mice. One by one, the genes prove identical. But at last, something does turn up. The difference between dark and light mice boils down to a difference of four chemical letters in a gene called MC1R. Because the gene controls the amount of dark pigment in a mouse's hair follicles, a mouse with these mutations grows dark fur, which gives it an advantage on a dark background. But still, that's one mouse. How would its dark fur spread to a whole population? This lava flow is about 1,000 years old. And so you might wonder, is, has there been enough time? It's only been 1,000 years. It's a very short period of time for a new mutation to come along and spread and, so that all of the mice on this lava flow are black, because really, they all are. Indeed, such a rapid spread of a mutation may seem unlikely, until you do the math. And the reason is that while only one new mouse born in 100,000 may be black, hundreds of thousands of mice are born in any given year. And then those mice that are black have enough advantage that their babies do better, and they have more offspring, and their offspring have more offspring. And just about a 5% advantage, compounded year in and year out, can very quickly turn the whole population black, as we see today. If dark color gives mice a 1% competitive advantage, and you start with 1% of the population being dark, then about 1,000 years, 95% of the mice will be dark. If instead, the dark color gives them a 10% advantage, then it only takes 100 years. Thanks to Nachman's mice, science has an example of evolution crystal clear in every detail. What's exciting about this is that we have a system that's very simple ecologically. You have dark rocks and you have light rocks and you have dark mice and light mice. It, it couldn't be simpler. We know who the predators are, what the selective force is. We know precisely the genetic basis of what makes the mice have an advantage or a disadvantage depending upon where they live. All the pieces are finally together. It's a perfect illustration of Darwin's process of natural selection. In fact, it's more than that, for Nachman's mice also counter a common misconception that evolution is a random process. Well, there is one random component, and that's the process of mutation. Mutations occur at random throughout our DNA. Every new organism is born with a new set of mutations. But while mutation is random, 
Natural selection is not. Natural selection sorts out the winners and losers. And that's really what the whole process of evolution is driven by. But if natural selection is not random, would it produce the same result under the same conditions? It does. And here's proof. Rock pocket mice collected by Nachman from other lava flows in other parts of the Southwest. These are two different black mice, and they each evolved on different lava flows. And the lava flows are hundreds of miles apart. But the changes, the genetic changes that made these mice black uh, were different in each case. And what's amazing to me is how similar the black mice are. We didn't know when we started this whether we would find that there were the same genes or different genes, and, and we were really surprised to find that they were completely different genes, and yet if you look at the mice, they look almost identical. Clearly, there are different genetic ways to make a mouse dark. But once the beneficial mutations appear, natural selection, the non-random part of evolution, can, under very similar conditions, favor very similar adaptations. In effect, each of these lava flows is like rewinding the tape of life and allowing evolution to occur again and again. And in each case, we find that dark mice have evolved. The rock pocket mice show us that evolution can and does repeat itself, and why evolutionary change is never ending. As environments transform, so must the species that inhabit them, adapting and readapting in the great and complex battle of life. Okay, now that you've watched the video on the rock pocket mouse, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to take those 30 keywords that you uh, wrote down at the beginning of the, the video, and we're going to put those into a word cloud. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that, or one good site that you can use is called Wordle. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to this Wordle. And what Wordle does is it creates word clouds. And word clouds will represent, and I'm sure you've seen them before, but they represent the, the key terms and key things that, that uh, are being said in a, that you want to try and convey. So I'm going to click on Wordle, and then when you get there, there's going to be a text box. You're going to enter in those 30 or more words that you wrote down, those key terms that you had, and it's going to create a word cloud for you. Now, what I did is I already uh, copied a piece of text from um, another activity I had about cell membranes. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all the transitions and other words that um, kind of jumble things up, and it's going to just pick out those key words, especially the words that are repeated more than once. And it'll do the same thing with you. And then what it does is it builds a word cloud around it. So I'm going to press go. It's going to create this word cloud. Now, when you get done with this, you can do you can randomize it into any design you have. But the big idea is when you get done, you should have something where you see the big key words that represent what's going on here. For this one, the, 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 the paragraph was about cell membranes. Cell membranes are going to be the biggest words that you see in there. The rest of the terms are going to be the supporting terms that help describe or help explain what, what, a, what a cell membrane does. So when you get done, you put those in. You can, you can print it out. You can save it if you like. I already saved one earlier. And, or you can make it by hand on a piece of paper, keeping in mind the rules for, the, uh, for what a word cloud does. You can have any design you like, many different types of fonts, many different types of um, patterns that are put in here. 
But when you get done, the, the biggest thing that I want you to do is, is explain how your word cloud represents what's going on with regard to natural selection and the pocket, rock pocket mouse population. Okay. Um, you have a bunch of words that are supporting what's going on, on with the natural selection. How does your word cloud represent what's going on with that? All right. Good luck.